Hi, this is Jason from Pioneer Cuts. I'm doing a solo video today just because we're going to talk about uh, the start of the business, the origin story, and the first steps that we took to get going that you don't often hear about. Um, so most of the initial planning and thoughts of the project was from the lazy boy in my living room. Um, I'm going to tell you after hours of research, the very first steps that I found out needed to be taken. Um, the first one is to register with the state of Michigan, or a LLC. Pretty easy process. There's a lot of uh, people online, legal Zoom and whatnot, that charge you $250, $300 to do this. It's a super simple application from uh, Michigan's website, simple Google search will pull it up and it's 25 bucks a year to registrate, register. There's no, it's not complicated at all. So LLC registration with Michigan in my case, uh, 25 bucks a year, super simple, was is step one. And then, um, you have to decide about, might as well lock down a dot com. Uh, there's all kinds of dot words and dot this and that, but uh, dot com is I was set on a dot com so we had to find a name for the business and we wanted the dot com to be open at the same time so you can get online there's several different sites to show you what dot coms are available <coughs> and what dot coms aren't so surprisingly several there are not very many dot cons open that that you think of um, and we we're going for you know, first first cut kind of prototype. So f first cut was taken, proto, all, everything proto was taken. So pioneer, like the pioneer days cuts, was just it's what we ended up with. <coughs> um, so lock down the dot com, register the domain. There's all kinds of domain registries out there. It's very, it's an, again another simple process. Uh, they walk you right through it. We register ours with Google, ended up with Google, but you have Namecheap, GoDaddy, you know, just pick one that's open, register it. It's like, I don't know, 20 bucks a year. Um, so you got your name locked down, you got your dot com locked down. Um, very first steps. Next step is Duns and Bradstreet. Uh, they're like some sort of credit outfit for businesses and you register with them and you get you end up with a Duns and Bradstreet number um, it's free so you get on their website it's been so long it's it's pretty self-explanatory just get on the website Duns and Bradstreet register your name you're going to need a, your EIN number, which is like your social security number for your business, is what the, Mich the state of Michigan is going to send you back once you register with them. So you're going to have to wait on that for a week or so. Uh, and you're going to use that EIN number moving, moving forward every, everywhere you go. It's just like, uh, like I said, your social security number for your business. <coughs> so you'll get that. Duns and Bradstreet, I think, will want it, that. Okay, so you're registered. Um, you don't have a website built yet. You just have your domain name picked. You can uh, build your website at any time at your leisure. You can start right out with one. You can hold off. It's not critical. There's all kinds of uh, drag and drop website builders out there. There's all kinds of do-it-yourself websites. Um, we started out with that. and. We've had actually more websites than I care to admit since uh, the start, and it's because once we got into marketing and search engine, opti engine optimization, SEO, um, turns out WordPress is probably the, is, is where people were telling us we needed to be to make those efforts um, successful in marketing and showing up in Google results organically. So. If I had to do it over again, I would uh, start with WordPress and stick with it, even though I would likely need some hired help to get it done. Um, 
Then there's another, once all that's done, there's a, a site called SAM.gov. And you're going to want to register with that. Um, what they are is, it's related to the government. Uh, if you want to do work for directly with the Department of Defense, you'll need to be on there. There's also, we have customers that require us to be on there because they are subcontractors for the government and they give us some of their work that they're contracted to do and they have to use entities that are on SAM.gov. And it's also <coughs> a free registration. It's a little bit lengthier process, the application. Uh, it's not quite as intuitive, but definitely doable, but it's a government thing, so it's, it's got to be a little messy. Uh, definitely worth doing right off the bat, get these, all these things set up and, and then, because we didn't set all these things up like I'm telling you right away, and we ran into roadblocks and had to go back and do it. Um, so these are kind of the begin, that's the beginning base that you need if you want to, you know, take a go, take a look at what it's going to take. <coughs> all these things that I've mentioned so far are there's not much money wrapped up in it, not much time. You can do the, all of this and decide at any minute that you want to stop. You're not really out anything. Um, once you have all these things done, you don't even have to build the website yet. You know, you can, that's going to be a little more expense if you do WordPress and hire it out. <coughs> I'd recommend going with a freelancer rather than an agency uh, on all the website building. And we use... Uh, We've, we've, we've contracted quite a bit of work out on Upwork. It's a freelance website where you can hire freelancers from all over the world. Um, obviously in India, websites can be built cheap. It's just monitoring the quality and it's kind of a give or take balance and how comfortable you are with outsourcing some of your IT work to India. We do a little bit there, but again, if I had to do it over again, our first website would have been built by a US-based person. Um, so that, uh, again, the website can come later, but I keep talking about it because we made a lot of, uh, I think, costly mistakes and had to revamp it when we could have just started a little stronger with the website area. So that's it. You're registered. You're now ready to do work. Um, insurance. None of our customers asked us for insurance. So it was me and Easton in the garage, and I didn't feel the need for a lot of insurance. And as in that situation, when you're the owner and you're the only one working, you do not have to have workman's compensation insurance. It's not a requirement. Um, as far as liability and business insurance, we, di we didn't get that for quite some time. None of our, my customers asked for it. Sometimes they do now. We, di we just didn't have any that did ask for copies of it. So we went without, without uh, insurance since it was just me, me and Easton for quite some time. And so w once we got to all those registrations and decided we were going without the insurance and learned that we didn't have to have workman's comp for a single member uh, LC where there's only one employee, you just don't have to have it. Uh, we didn't do it, and now you're ready to take. We're ready to take some work. Um, so I talked about the SAM.gov and the Department of Defense. Uh, so the Department of Defense actually has a website. It's called Dibs D I B B S. Dot gov. I think you'll have to go look, Dibs. Um, the Department of Defense lists all the jobs that they have available, and it's kind of like a board system, and, you're, and they're just available to bid on. And it's super, super complicated. It takes a lot of, uh, a lot of effort to research and see what they're talking about and what's going on in that website. That's, some, that's how we got started. Um, we currently do not do that work, just because the private sector is much easier to deal with and the money is better. So the government, you hear the stories about them paying $300 for a roll of toilet paper and $500 for a hammer. 
etc. You hear those stories? That's not been my experience. It's very competitive on this particular site. The, the, the contracts are long. The drawings are very rudimentary and old. Uh, very hard to read in many cases. If there's questions, you're go it's going to take months possibly to get an answer. Um, when, you part, when you do manufacture parts, it seems like they put more emphasis on the labeling that you have to do, the barcodes, the labels, the part marking, the bagging, than they do the actual part and the quality of the part. Uh, most cases from the DIBS work, a government inspector will come to your facility and inspect the shipment, labeling mostly, paperwork, did it was it the right material, search for the processes before the job can ship. A lot of people do this government kind of work and they're profitable at it and that's all they do. It's just we, that's just not what we do. We're not opposed to it. Uh, we want to get back into doing some of it just because, you know, it supports our country. Um, and we look at it from time to time. But like I said, it's, it's pretty competitive. That you'll see as you go through the past contractors are a lot of the same contractors and they're manufacturing things pretty efficiently. Um, so not everything is cut out for a machine shop. There's just tons of different, there's sewing, there's tents, I mean, textiles, electronics, it's all on there, gloves, just everything you can imagine is on there. But it's available, it's easy if you're not a very good salesman like me. You don't have to talk to them, you just go on there. There's the work, bid on it. In the beginning, I won all kinds of government work. I was just one job after another. Um, I also quoted a lot of it too, too lean. Um, but being just me and Easton, we didn't really have a lot of overhead. We didn't have to make a, a lot of money. We just had to support the family. I wasn't working now, and I was doing government work. So that's how we got started. That's kind of the basic steps. Other than the government work, I started doing some cold calls got a few regular customers, some worked out, some didn't. You know, there's a lot of middlemen out there, a lot of different operations, and I worried a lot about not getting paid. Um, knock on wood, that hasn't happened to date. We've always got paid, but it was always a big concern, put all this time and money and effort, and then have to fight to get paid. So it's Definitely concern. We, do, we always do our credit checks. We spend the money to do the credit reports, uh, weigh the risk, and decide if we want to do the work. So those are the beginning steps. That's kind of how we started in the garage. Um, slowly got, ended up with, uh, we started with a uh, Tormach CNC machine, and it was, uh, it's a cheap, it's a cheap, more of a hobbyist type machine, but it was the only, it was the only thing that uh, could convince my wife that we, we could invest in and afford to take a chance. Um, had I had it to do over again, I would skip the Tormach and bought the Haas Mini Mill, which was our second machine. I sold the Tormach as uh, soon as, but we had the Haas Mini Machine, then we bought a Haas TM2P, and we jammed both of those in a one and a half car garage, sold the Tormach, because the Tormach just wasn't ideal. It's just, they made them a little better now. They have a BT30 taper spindle, but before it was a R8 collet that held my tools in. I had my job at the same time. I was trying to program lights out. Um, I set a job off for 10, 10, 12 hour run because it's not a very powerful machine. It's capable and it's accurate. It's just not powerful. I'd come home and the tool holders would be laying on the part. It was just a mess and it wasn't working. Um, so if I had it to do over again, I would skip the Tormont. You see a lot of videos out there with, uh, who's that guy? Uh, NYC and C. He's, he used to make all the Tormont videos uh, and s support the Tormont and show you how to use it, but apparently Haas is sponsoring him now because he is not uh, showing Tormach videos anymore, he's showing Haas videos. Um, that's probably more to do with sponsorship than, than machine, but 
but the Haas is a, definitely a better machine and definitely worth the cost increase. Um, but that's how we got started. That's kind of the initial initial stage that we took to get going. If you'd like to hear more, if you got any questions, you know, put them in the comments. If you want to hear more about the next steps or more clarity about maybe the government contracting, maybe you're interested in an in-depth video on that, you know, let me know. I'll subscribe and we'll, we'll take you through the rest of our process. Um, some of the tips and tricks, the machining video, but not only that, some of the tips and tricks of starting the business. Our goal is still to offer information that has not been offered in other videos uh, and to just really lay it right out for you. So if any of these, if this video, the first initial steps are not clear, let me know. I want to make sure everything's clear and that you can get this far uh, registrations and all pretty easily without too much investment. So subscribe, stay tuned. We release a video every other Tuesday. Thanks for watching.